Hello everyone, I am Rizu Gaming, and welcome back to Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. Alright, so we can see that as soon as we, I think, finish one of these red things, uh, maybe another one always shows up and so we stop the execution and now we need to have a feast that will happen um, instead of that. This is for Proc the Drunk, and I think Proc the Drunk, yeah, is already a helper for Ratbag the Coward, so I don't know if we are too opposed to him, you know, staying strong and just these two staying buddies to Ratbag the Coward, uh, as long as we're able to kind of take out these uh, guys without, you know, the other four that we're interested in without their bodyguards being there. Um, I think the first thing that we want to do not the weapons and runes, but the upgrades. Look at all the new upgrades that we have. It's all of these. So, what we're missing out is countering people stuns them or knocks them down. Not super useful because in order to execute them when they're knocked down, uh, it just takes a really long time and you're still vulnerable during that time. And then we have the anti caragors which we haven't been investing into this entire line, I think. Either going heavy into this or skipping it all together is probably the right move. This pins an Uruk in place, um, which allows you to quickly shoot a shot to pin an Uruk in place. Uh, it seems a little bit easier to just charge up a shot and then shoot him in the head, and that also effectively pins him in place. Uh, and then a new way to do a stealth kill, which just brutalizes them and causes them all to run away. I wonder if you can do a cute thing, because... Um, one, this starts building up a combo. You'll notice it in the top left of this animation. Two, three, four, five. So you can use this to kind of build up a finisher at the beginning of a fight. I also wonder if you can use this to make people run away, pin them, chase them down, brutalize them to make everyone else run away, pin them down, brutalize them, and you could maybe get a sort of cute combo thing going off. But we're not really investing in those two. So let's take a look at all these new upgrades. This one is locked um, because we don't have the prerequisite which is locked behind a main mission and then these two are locked behind uh, main missions. But let's go ahead and look at these six. Swift Finisher reduces the time required to perform a ground execution. Okay, I'm pretty sure that we're just going to buy this straight off the bat. Um, <laughs> One thing that's annoying is when people are knocked down, you can't keep hitting them with your sword the normal way, so it interrupts your combo. Uh, and then if you try and execute them, it takes a long time, and you're still vulnerable the entire time. Uh, I've said this a few times before, but when you build up sort of your uh, execution thing, it enters a cinematic, and during that cinematic, you are invulnerable, so you will just kill whatever orc you're hitting with it. I wonder if this just turns it into a cinematic or it just makes it faster, but either way, this seems like a worthwhile investment, if only to see that it's useful. Vaulting over people stuns them. This might be useful because it looks like they get wraith stunned, so when it jumps over them, you can see that they're kind of painted in blue. That looks like the same blue that happens when you hit them with a wraith stun. And when they're stunned, you're able to do that super fast attack that is really useful for building up a flurry finish. So, this just seems like a useful thing to have. Brace of daggers. Now this lets you hold, hit Q rapidly and you can throw up to three instead of just one. I almost never use this in combat anyway. I might be missing out on the usefulness of this, but I feel like this just pins you in place, so if you're about to get hit, or anything like that, I don't know. I'm not crazy about this one. This lets you upgrade your dash attack. So you tap left control instead of holding it down and it can break their shield, which might be useful, especially if you're fighting against a big boss who has a shield. Um, and he has some things that stop him from being, say, vaulted over and he has a shield, so you can't hit him from the front. You can't punch him, you can't jump over him and hit him in the back because he's, he's a boss so he stops you from jumping over him. This might be a useful way to break that shield. <clears throat> this lets you, if you flurry kill, it explodes their head, it looks like. Or if you drain them, it uh, 
victims of drain and flurry kill explode and everyone else runs. And then this lets you, ooh, instead of a finisher, it looks like you can press C to drain an Uruk and recover your elf shot. Recovering elf shot in the middle of a fight seems like something that could be very useful um, because it's difficult to drain someone and get your elf shot back in the middle of a fight. This turns your finisher, instead of killing someone, which can be of decent utility, to uh, getting elf shot back, which is killing four people if you have your focus charged. I really like this. I think I'm going to get this and try and keep track of this to remember that I can use it um, in the middle of a fight. And then I think this naturally combos with this. Victims of Drain explode. This is a combat drain. So I wonder if this now turns my finisher into not only do I get elf shot back, but I also just kill them straight up. So I think I'm just going to get this at least to experiment with it and see if I can sort of drain people um, to get that to happen. And I know that we have one point that's left over. I'm wondering whether I want to put it into this or into this, and I think it depends on whether we face a boss who has a shield who also has anti-vault, and then I'll put it in this. And there is an Arise challenge that's now available. Alright, so, we have a couple of war chiefs that we're gonna go after. Before we do that, Let's go after the Golem quest line. Last time that unlocked a useful ability for us that we have used one time so far, which was during the quest line. But maybe we'll get something that's useful and that we remember to use. And that would be useful and used. Before we do this, let's try this. Yeah, I'm just draining him. Ah, if he's drained and damaged enough to die, then his head explodes. Hold on one second. I just want to check this. I wonder if there's a way that we can... I don't think so. You get all your focus and elf shot back on any last chance success. And we have two of those, so that might be useful. Um, increases melee damage by 20% at mid hit streak ranges so when i get up to 15 to 29 i'll be doing extra damage that seems useful 37 focus goes back up on a ground execution this might be useful because now we can do ground executions this recovers a tiny negligible amount of health on a flurry kill this gives us defense against range attacks this is essentially 25 percent less damage received for melee damage. Um, boy, what is the thing that I'm looking for? I think it was maybe a bow thing. You gain more elf shot on a drain or a brand. I don't know what brand does. This recovers your focus for a headshot kill, which is almost exclusively what we do, riding a monster after firing a bow, so you just have 6% more elf shot. Seems negligible. Yeah, here we go. We have a 49% chance to recover 50 focus when you get a head explosion kill, which I think is what we just did. Grab shank kills, it gives us focus back. 25 health on a head explosion kill, 65%, 64% chance. This might be useful if we're constantly using the drain thing. Um, this recovers 25 health times 35. Oh, so I think Narag the Slippery was just better than Malmug the Serpent. That's why this is a 37% and this is a 64% chance. And then this recovers 58% of your focus on a stealth kill, which doesn't really happen in the middle of combat, so I'm not too jazzed about. This might be worth equipping. What do we have? This is for the dagger. So currently we have the stealth one, or sorry, the poison one, which I don't think is super useful right now. I don't know how to 
equip that. Let's select this rune. Ah, we've replaced it. This was 50 health. This was extra damage to captains and war chiefs, which we haven't been using stealth kills that much on them, but we do use ground executions on them. And I don't know what percentage of the... Uh, it doesn't tell us how much extra damage it does. I imagine it's significant because it's an evergreen. Whoa! Alright. Golem is hungry to lead the Bright Master to the artifacts. With each discovery of the power of the Wraith grows. With each... Sorry. With each discovery, the power of the Wraith grows and his connection to the Dark Lord becomes clearer. And it looks like it's one of those big guys that killed us last time. Well, where is he? Your friend is either a liar or a coward. Maybe it was you who threatened his life. <sighs> Let's go find your precious treasure. Drama. Yeah, the little vermin is not here. The eagle hunts rabbits from up high. <laughs> Check this out. Me. So, Wraith Vision lets us see all the enemies that are on the map. There's a Karagor, there's a Karagor, there's a Karagor, there's a Karagor, there's a Karagor. I think there might be a theme to what we're going to be fighting. Maybe we get to avoid them all together. That would be nice too. Right now, I think Shouting I'm in the middle. the cave's mouth yeah. will only lead us into the Grog's jaws. A well-placed arrow will do the trick here. So, I am unable to move around or do anything like that. Impressive, Talion. That should keep the Grog occupied. So you shoot the meat, and you seize the meat, and I have a time limit. I gotta move to these caves. Two, the air one. Is ah. thick in death. Here we go, boys. Ghouls. Why am I not surprised? Looks like the Grog won his fight against the Karagors. And now is ready for another. Something tells me uh, we haven't seen the last of that Grug. Also, Olathron. Also, whoop, I thought there was a second one back there, but it just took a while to despawn. I need to kill these I things, right? Vermin from the depths of the earth. Totally worth it. Well, 
leave that herb so we can maybe recover health with it. Don't touch it! Shatter Strike. Hold this, tap Z, and it consumes two elf shots. And now it's just a range tool. So, this is telling us. Grab that. I can't, oh, I can't get past that. Ah! This is great for killing the ghouls on my hunting challenge. Uh, I think I'm supposed to run up here. Took me a while. Let's see. trying to attack. Oh, he just automatically attacks, so there's nothing I can do about it. He will always follow up with the slow roll attack. His legend. How Sauron deceived you into making the rings. He tortured both you and your king. Oh, my precious. The master makes it too. What is it? I have no memory of any such thing. Why would it even matter? The master must remember. His must. We. We dig up more treasures. There was a bonus objective. I grasp at vespers of memory. I ain't totally power. Nine to men. Their power became their undoing. They became the ring wraiths. Yes, 
the Nazgul. But the Nazgul were destroyed, as are many who come in contact with the Rings of Power. That's good news. Oh! Get out of here. We have a hunting challenge to kill three bats, so it looks like we took out enough ghouls to satisfy the hunting challenge. All right. So, war chief, war chief, war chief. There should be one more war chief, I thought. We've only taken out, oh, maybe we haven't discovered the, uh... yeah, we haven't discovered the fourth. So this guy has a bodyguard. This guy has a bodyguard. This guy has a bodyguard. But this guy... ...does not. He can be damaged by combat finishers and ranged attacks. Super useful. Do not want to burn him. Calls nearby enemies. If you hit him from behind, he'll... So, jumping over him won't be super useful. And it looks like... Can we zoom out? We can zoom out. Looks like he's got a shield. Ah, uh, so. Quick turnaround means we want to jump over him and hit him, but as soon as we hit him from behind, he can use his shield to kind of stop us after he turns around. He can smell our enemies, and he recovers health every time we hit him. Okay. I think because of this... It means that I'm going to try and go for the shoulder charge. Oh, hold on a second. Um, this says it will damage wooden shields and knock enemies down. I wonder if it specifically says wooden shields because you can see his shield looks fairly fragile. Whoops, misclick there. And I wonder if this guy's shield Can rotate him. Yeah, that doesn't look particularly wooden to me. Such that hitting it with my shoulder I don't think is actually going to do anything. I think the way you want to take him down is you want to range him. Can be injured by range or the shadow strike ability that we just unlocked. So I think... I actually think, but he can be stunned and he can be vaulted over. I actually think that that means we want to go for this. One, this will just happen automatically, so it will just be useful without me having to remember about it. And it might actually be particularly useful against this boss, because if we stun him, uh, we might be able to pull something off. Oh! And I completely forgot that we had uh, this ability that we could have spent it on, which is a lethal version of Shadow Strike. But that's fine, I imagine we will be using this to get on top of ranged units. And then because we have this, we might just be able to execute them right away. So we'll try that as a combination. Um, I think that'll be the first thing we do next episode. I think we're going to work on just trying to take all of these war chiefs down. And that'll be kind of the goal for the next few episodes. So... Uh, we'll keep that in mind, and until next time.